I said, do you see the stars, boys, don't you? To see that really, really bright one, that's your mum on her way to heaven. She's my lady. My star. She's my everything. School bag in hand, she leaves home in the early morning. This is from the film that was played at Jade Goody's funeral, put together by three of her closest friends, as they'd promised her before she died. The Jay Good effect really was phenomenal. She knew that through her profile she could make a difference, and she did make a difference. 400,000 extra women went for screening over the last year because of Jade and the effect that she had, and that must have saved lives. Jade made a huge impact, and in the battle for her life, she shone a light onto all her own fears of dying. She asked me what I thought her funeral would be like, and the one question she asked was, it'll be busy, won't it? And I said yes, but I didn't have any idea. I don't think she had any idea how big it was going to be. Oh. So obviously, my daughter didn't have just a, a normal funeral. Lots of people turned out in the streets to pay their respects and watch Jade from Bermondsey on her final journey. Oh, God, there was millions. Thousands of people. Thousands. God, there weren't even a road empty. There was people at the windows, the doors, the streets, at every age you could think of. And everyone had flowers or banners or... Well done, Jackie. Don't worry, be strong. Well done, Jack. You're a lovely husband. Don't worry, she'll always be with you. Jade's main wishes were that everyone would cry over her funeral. Just pure tears.
But her sons, Bobby and Freddie, weren't at the funeral. It was their father, Jeff Brazier's decision. I'd already sort of instinctively just decided that I was going to take the boys away. I wanted them to get away from what I saw as a bit of a frenzy. Um, there was going to be a lot of press and, I mean, I don't know why I went as far as Australia, but it's just strange, isn't it? You just think, I, I need to get them as far away from this place and obviously that, I couldn't have got them any much further. The service, obviously everyone's going to cry, but I thought the hardest thing was getting in the car, but no, it wasn't. I had to see my baby girl going in some hole. The family had asked for the burial to be private. No cameras were allowed. She was in a white coffin and it just goes down and down and down and down. And then um, I put the flowers, the roses on her. And then everyone just disappeared and walked away from the hole. And I just couldn't. I couldn't walk away from the hole, so I kept going back. Going back, and my mum got really scared because she thought I was going to go down with her. Oh God, if I could have, I would have. It was all hard, every part of it, even when she passed. But God, when you really finally get to the old, that's, that's it. Just seeing her get covered up. I knew what I wanted to do at the same time as the funeral. I had the idea of sending some um, pictures and letters from the boys in a bottle um, up to up to Mummy in heaven. Basically, the way we was going to do that is by throwing it in the sea, and I told the boys that the sea would take it up, take it up there for them. They just trusted in what in what I said, and um, they were happy that this bottle, even though. The, there was no lid to it or anything, that it was going to go and, and reach its destination. So it brought them a lot of comfort. She'd been so proud that she had a beautiful funeral and I don't think she realised how popular she was out there and how much support that everyone gave her. Jade Goody made an impact on people all over the world and touched the hearts of many. Her life and her death made a difference. But Jade's most important legacy is her boys. When I told the boys that their mummy had died, I'd waited till the evening. So I took them out in the garden and pointed to the stars. I said, you see the stars, boys, don't you? See that really, really bright one? That's your mum on her way to heaven. And they stood there just in complete amazement. Um, that was obviously bearing in mind the first time that they'd been told, you know, that mum is on her way. She's not at the hospital anymore. You can't see her anymore. Jade was filmed over the years by Living TV, and this footage, never seen before, was recorded in December 2008. Away? Yeah. When she was already very ill. All right, lay down then, please. Had to catch a star, yeah? Once there was a boy, and the boy loved stars very, very much. Every night, the boys watched the stars from his window and wished he had one of his very own. And he waited. And he waited. <laughs> and after dinner, he waited some more. And sure enough, the star washed up on the bright golden sand. The boy caught a star. The star of his very own. Then they lay down, cuddled up, looked at the stars, looked at the sky, said a prayer, and went straight to sleep. Coming up, life without her. It's been a tough year for all those people closest to Jade. But there have been highs. As well. Oh my God, Jackie Bennett's getting married. As well as lows. I speak to him every day. 
And, you know, we all get a little chat with him on the phone. That's quite nice. And we remember Jade Goody as you've never seen her before. The footage we haven't been able to show. Till now. It's not until you actually realise you're about to lose someone, your children are about to lose their mum, that you realise just how precious she is. Ever so proud of her, proud of mostly how she dealt with her illness. Because I just can't... To see somebody go through what she went through is just heartbreaking. Well, you wake up and you go to ring her or you want to tell her something and... For that split second, you still think she's at the other end of the phone. She's not. But there's film of Jade that's never been seen before, where she talks frankly about her illness. And that courage comes shining through. It was recorded just four months before she died and contains some harrowing descriptions of her cancer. Before I went to Big Brother India, I went into the hospital because I uh, collapsed again with blood loss and pain. Um, which has happened to me on four other occasions. They just sort of told me that it was um, a heavy period or stress. I was in there for a week, I think, yeah, a week. When um, I was in uh, Big Brother India, they said, you need to come home. I was like, well, I'm here for three months. Is that a problem? And he said to me, if you don't get home in three months, you'll be dead. I said, why, what is wrong, what is it? And that's when he said, cancer. When he had told me, obviously, I started crying, but... Stage one, stage four, stage seven, whatever they are, it means nothing to me. Cancer's cancer, as far as I'm concerned. And I remember coming home, and I remember sitting on my toilet, and this is going to sound quite horrible, but this is how bad the tumour actually was. I was sitting on my toilet, and I went to the toilet, and I'm not even lying to you, thick black stuff, as black as my jumper, thick, like, tart, just was falling out of me. And that was the actual tumour and my womb falling out of me. The tumour was so big, it was eating away. I had that falling out down my toilet. Um, and I, I, that was what I had to deal with. That's how bad it actually was. So that was what I got my head around, the radical hysterectomy. And it was 95% chance of survival, which is brilliant. It's like, you know, 5% chance it can go. And so I thought, perfect. That's what I need. It needs to be taken out and I'll be all better. And then they see that behind the womb, there was more cancer cells, they cleared them, but they also seen they had spread um, as well, and they couldn't take the risk. So from 95% um, percent chance of survival, it dropped to a 50% chance. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, it dropped to 50% chance of survival straight away in a matter of minutes. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with, ever, <laughs> because I've got no control over anything. I take so many tablets every single day. I have to take oh, painkillers. I have to take two painkillers, no, three painkillers, um, my HRT, a depression tablet, um, uh, a sickness tablet because I can't keep any food down. Um, a sachet to help me go to the toilet. Uh, yeah, seven. Yeah, seven, three times a day. And then a sleeping tablet of a night time. What are you most scared of that's going to happen to you? Oh, it's obvious, isn't it? I'm most scared that I'm going to die. When Jade found out she was ill, her agent, Max Clifford, became more than just her manager. I was very fond of Jade, and the better I knew her, the fonder I got. Um, I mean, you know, don't forget, at one time, she was in the same room that my wife had died in just a few years before of cancer. I introduced her to, to Anne, Anne Coxon, who was my doctor, who's, you know, brilliant doctor, brilliant lady doctor, and within a couple of meet, weeks of meeting Anne, she had the best people doing tests, and it was quickly revealed the cervical cancer. Had she had diagnosis two or three months earlier, 
she would be alive today. It was just too late. It's understandable because cervical cancer is rare in people under the age of 30. But nevertheless, the symptoms were quite typical of cervical cancer and the diagnosis was missed. Had she had a diagnosis at an earlier stage, her life would have been spared. Bang! Thank you. For those closest to Jade, the reality of her illness came as a huge shock and changed everything. We had a real frank and honest conversation. It, was, it just seemed like she knew she was ill and that changed something, you know. It just meant that she changed in her attitude towards me slightly. Um, but we had a, 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 what I'd consider a lovely conversation. It was lovely because it was just honest and there, there wasn't any sort of rubbish involved in it. It was more, um, you know, I'm, I'm not well, I'm going to need your help. And it was a little bit more like um, her just being open enough to admit that. Um, and I just remember naively thinking she'll be fine because she always has been. She's always had a lot of trouble in her life and she's always got through it. So um, I, I didn't really, even though I've had people in my family that have died of cancer, um, it, it still didn't feel like it was her time or that it was going to happen to her. You could just see in her eyes how scared she, scared she was and I just, I just don't know what to say to her. I'm going to, obviously, I've always tried to be there and I'm going to be there now. Till, till she needs me, till she doesn't want me there anymore. Or the worst happens, but I'm not thinking of it in that way. So, yeah, I'm going to be here. And we're, we're, I'm always going to be there. In February 2009, Jade was told the worst by a doctor in the Royal Marsden Hospital. Her producer and best friend, Kate Jackson, was there. She started to scream at me through the door and I couldn't understand what was going on and I walked into the room and she was screaming, screaming, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And she cried like a little baby. And then very quickly she said, get your pen and paper out. I need to start making plans. And she listed everything she wanted us to do. I'm dying. What? And she just got louder and louder and louder. And started screaming, I'm dying, I'm dying. Do you understand? I'm dying. And what do you do? What do you say? And I didn't say nothing. I just grabbed her hand and I cried and she went, where does that come from? Because she's not used to me crying. She's not in her whole life. She don't see me cry. We listed everything she wanted for the boys everything from private education to her being able to buy their first car and knowing that we'd be there when she bought it for them. We listed everything to do with her mum. And I asked her what she wanted me to do. She just told me to look after Jack and the two boys. And she just went into, I've got a lot to do now. I'm going to get married, I'm going to christen the boys, I'm going to do everything I want to do before I die. Jeff Brazier's the person whose life's changed most in the year without Jade, from part-time dad to full-time single parent. She rang me to tell me that she was terminal and obviously taking that phone call was unimaginably difficult. I can't even begin to feel how that might have been for her. But for two days it knocked me sideways um, because this dawn of realisation kind of just swept over me where I, I realised that my life was about to change significantly and that the boys would be living with me not just for one week, two weeks, but for the rest of their childhood. Seeing their mum ill was devastating for the boys. That They um, didn't really let on so much. I remember when... Um, their mum told them that she was going to die, um, that she was going to go to heaven, is how she worded it. And I remember then taking them into the um, sitting room at the hospital and I wanted to make sure that they understood what mummy had just said. 
but um, they did eventually, you know, say that they, you know, they're not happy about it and um, that they're really upset and they don't want their mummy to go to heaven. And I remember hearing that quite a lot. I don't want my mummy to go to heaven. So naturally, that would probably have been the hardest and toughest thing that the boys might even encounter throughout their whole life, let alone throughout their, the six years that they've been here. Um, I'm hoping that they don't remember that, actually. I'm hoping that they're left with just good memories of mum and not the memories of her being upset or not being able to talk to them or, you know, the moment that mum turned round and actually delivered the news that she's going to be going to heaven. I hope they forget all of that. Jade spent the last two weeks of her life at home. She held on until the 22nd of March, 2009, Mother's Day. The nurse said, Jack, we're ready. And she's crying down the old ass. Quickly, Jack. She's ready. Come on. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't come in. He just threw all the cushions on him and um, I screamed. We just grabbed her hand. And she just looked and she just gave us one big smile and then went. We said a prayer. It was strange, I just got up, like nothing could happen, and I put an apron on. And the nurse said, what are you doing? I said, I've got a braver. So I said, I need to wash her down now. I need to bathe her, I need to cream her, and this nurse got this coconut button. No, 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 that's for sores. Jo Maloney, she wants. And I, I just bathed her. I bathed the nurses. I wouldn't let the nurses touch her. They looked after her as a baby girl. I've just done it all over again. I've become a mum. <laughs> I've become a mum, which I wasn't in the beginning. Jade's childhood had been very tough. Jackie, by her own admission, had let her down. But when Jade became ill, things changed. Jade always looked after me. Always, always. I mean, obviously, my disability was one. You know, for having a child of five, Jade washed, cleaned, cooked, changed plugs. <laughs> Jade just looked after me in general. She couldn't be my mum when she was too ill, so I had to be her mum. And I'm really sorry to say this, but I became a real mum when my daughter was poorly and not before. Because we were filming throughout this time, there's lots of unseen footage which shows how close Jade and her mum had become. I'm doing you a favour today. Oh, what, cutting my hair with bloody um, vegetable scissors? How is that a favour? I said to my mum last night, I was like, Mum, can I cut your hair? She was like, no. And I was like, can I cut your hair? She was like, no, you can't. <laughs> she went, not with them scissors out there, them scissors you used to cut the roses with. Yeah. No, I don't. I cut the, the vegetables with them. <laughs> she went, there you go. They're like allotment scissors. You're not cutting my hair with them. And then in the end, she said I could, so I'm cutting it today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even though she was poorly, she's looking after me still the same way of cutting my hair and we was just struggling all the way through it. This is a bonding moment with my mum at the minute. This is how we bond. <laughs> right, come on, let's be nice to each other for a bit. Well, I'm usually nice. To she you. does do my head in, but in all fairness, her, she's been quite good at um, the minute. Let's go in the kitchen, go, go stick your head over the tap. My head's full of knots, Jade. Just stay there and don't keep telling me what I am doing and what I ain't doing. Otherwise, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll cut your hair awful. Oh, good God. Stop talking to me like I'm fine. <laughs> Stop oh, that's showing off now. <laughs> I'm not, but you are, really. All right, fine then. I'll just say a little prayer. <laughs> well, we can just start by chopping that off. Yeah, because it doesn't matter that, because that was a orange. <laughs> <laughs> 
What you mean dropping? If we could sell my hair. Okay. Yeah, it's like the green one. Yeah, these are the ones I cut the carrots with. <laughs> what did you cut the other ones with? They're too little to cut anything with. Really, chicken probably. Oh, my God, I'm cutting my left hand. Don't say, oh, dear. What yeah, because I'm cutting my left hand. Yeah, but, oh, dear. Kate, still! Stop shouting. She was getting tired, and she, you know, because of her, her chemo and that, and her medication, we'd laughed all the way through it, and a lot of energy had been taken out of Jade, and, but bless her. She struggled, and she'd done it for me. <laughs> 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 that mean that it's all folk? No, no, like no, just sit still. I'll make it look nice, but I'll try. You are good, actually. <laughs> don't move! Please, don't, don't, don't move! All right, I won't. Because I thought that's going to go shorter. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, my God. Don't laugh, Jade. I don't know why, but for some reason, I can't get them bits. What bit? <laughs> Maybe I should start cut it from here and then bring it back. <laughs> Maybe I should go on a hairdressing course. <gasps> oh, my oh, God. Oh, Jesus. That means I... This is hard. Let's bro dry it. Yeah. It was quite surprising to know that she's not an hairdresser. She did use vegetable scissors, right? And it came out absolutely perfect. So... Yep, sorry, hairdressers. Yeah, me chavy done it better than all of you. I'm actually quite impressed here. I, it's not the best, but it's not awful. That was the last haircut I had uh, for, for when I buried her. Oh. Yeah, she cut my hair for a funeral. Making sure that I look nice. Oh. Mummy's asleep, I think. No! No! no. Tell the camera what you want me to do. My arm! My arm! I'm awake now. I have to have a kiss though if you want me to go back to sleep. Jade chose where she wanted to be buried, but it was left to Jeff to explain it to their boys, and it was hard. The fact that they'd missed the funeral um, posed a, a slight problem because when you explain that mummy's gone up to heaven, um, how do you describe to them that the uh, what we know as obviously the grave is anything other than where mummy has been put into the ground? So I um, had to be quite careful about that and it just meant that that became mummy's special place. They don't know that she's under the ground. Um, buried there, they just know that that's where everybody who loved Mummy can go to think about her, to talk to her, and to just feel, feel close to her. This is the temporary headstone at Jade's grave. The ground has to settle for a year before there can be a permanent one. I enjoy going over there because it's such a beautiful place. Um, the boys like to go over, the first thing they do is argue over the watering can and then they'll fill it up with water, get themselves really wet and uh, then they'll douse all the flowers in, in as much water as they think they can get away with. Uh, then we'll add, obviously, whatever we have brought with us onto the, onto the headstone. And then uh, I'll always sit them on this beautiful bench that is just facing the most wonderful view and and um, start a conversation about mummy and what she might be doing at that given time and um, whereabouts in the in the sky she is and um, and that's something that we do every couple of weeks so mummy special place is is a very nice place to go and visit absolutely beautiful it's breathtaking
The boys have been filmed for most of their lives, including the footage we've shown. But with the press frenzy that surrounded Jade's illness, Jeff took action to protect them in future. I just remember that when I visited the hospital on one occasion, that there was a sea of photographers and it was a bit like, my children uh, don't need this and I, I, I wonder if there is a way of legally getting them stopped from taking photos of the boys. And lo and behold, it was. It was possible because it was an exceptional circumstance. I had luckily not said a word for a long time, which gave me the right to ask for privacy. If the boys were in a magazine once now, then the privacy ban would fall flat on its face and it would mean that for the rest of their childhood they'd have people waiting outside the front door to photograph them on every anniversary of their mum's death. And I've enjoyed telling the magazines that no 50 grand is, is not going to do it, no amount of money is going to do it because that the childhood that they're having at the moment, but for the loss of their mum, is one that I'm really happy with, and that's worth far more than any amount of money that ever mag any magazine or production company or newspaper could ever offer. Jade's mum, meantime, had gone to live in Tenerife. It was a special place for her, because it was where she, Jade and the boys had spent their last holiday together, along with our crew, before the ban on filming the boys was in place. But some of the best footage we've recorded has never been seen. Like you're bald. Like you're bald like me. Good boy. Look at his teeth. Watch. Wonderful memories that took Jackie back to Tenerife after Jade's death. In Tenerife, um, I met a guy called Jason. He asked me if I would marry him, and I was overwhelmed and I was really happy, and I said yes. Oh my god, I'm getting married, I can't believe it. Yeah, on the 6th of February. It's just Jackie and Jackie. I, nothing surprises me with Jackie. And I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I thought, oh, um, but happy for her. When Jackie Budden said she was getting married, I almost fell off my chair. We were all going to be bridesmaids again. We all had our bridesmaids' presents, um, all our dresses. I was really shocked um, when Jackie said she was getting married because um, I've never, you know, I've not known her to be with a man. Someone would say to me, all right, are you bisexual now? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I don't want to be classed as bisexual. I don't want to be classed as gay. I'm Jackie, and I'm with a man. <sighs> when you first meet a man, you've been a lesbian for so many years, that little bed bit is quite scary. It's like, <sighs> nothing puff for it. So Jackie came home from Tenerife to arrange the wedding. Her first job was to find the dress, something she would have done with her daughter. But instead, she asked our producer, Kate, to come. Wait to see the dress I picked out. It's very hot. It's it's hot. hot. Oh, oh, couldn't it get married? I know. It's so oh, bizarre it's seeing you in a wedding dress. Turn around on the stool a minute. Ooh. Come on, we got you. Oh, my God. Everything done. 
Yeah. You alright? No. Sorry. Yeah. Aww. What are you crying for? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I look lovely and Jane should be here. I'll take it off now. Oh, Jane, you're not going to be here. She can see you anyway. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but I've got lots more to try on and she'll poke me if it's the wrong one in any case. Oh, here comes the bun. It's horrible. I can't believe I'm standing in a shop with all this on. It's all plain boring. I feel like Victoria Posh in here. <laughs> this is like my kitchen. <laughs> I look like a bride and I feel like a bride, I think oh. so. Oh my god, Jackie Budden's getting married! Oh. Hey. Jackie Budden's getting married! Stop now, because it made me cry. <laughs> Jane is here, she'd be very proud. Oh, I don't want to cry no more. Things were going well for Jackie. But the same couldn't be said for Jack Tweed, Jade's widower. On September the 4th, he made headlines. <laughs> One friend who'd spent a lot of time with both Jade and Jack was Mark Fuller. He travelled with them on their first holiday together. I made Jade three promises, or rather she dictated three promises to me. Um, one was to carry her coffin, which I did, which was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Two was to look after the boys, which I will. And three was to look after Jack. I was throughout the Jade and Jack saga from the beginning, right at the beginning, when we were in Abu Dhabi. I remember the rows, I remember the lovey doveness, I remember everything. I think for a young lad like him, um, it was very difficult. And I think he did her proud. I think he stayed with her at the moments that she wanted and she, and, and, and she left us knowing she was much loved by the man she loved. The only thing she really, really wanted, because she was dying, was to, a dream day, and Jack gave it to her. <laughs> she was the happiest bride ever. <laughs> Three months after Jack's arrest, our producer Kate went to film his mum, Mary, at the family home. I speak to him every day, practically every day. And um, so... And, you know, we all get a little chat with him on the phone. So that's quite nice. Mary's hoping that Jack will soon come home to live with her, his dad, and his younger brother, Lewis. Um, this is Jack's bedroom, which, um, when he moved out, Lewis moved into his big room. So now he's in a smaller room again. But I've done it up for him. The other day, I came across this list, um, which I started crying when I read it, actually, because I was sorting out the, the uh, Jack's old bedroom, and this was a list of um, that he'd made, obviously gone on the internet, on books, of how to cure Jade. All the best drinks, the teas, the juices, um, how to cook the ginger, uh, fish... Best vegetables, because he loved to sign that. He just wanted to cure her. And also, this was a, a present to Jack and Jade, and there's a candle, which, again, he, he's, he's lit once. Um, but he went and got it engraved after, after she died, and he's put on it, My Wife Jade, and the date of her birth, the date they got married and the date she passed away. That was a wedding present. That was their last holiday together. Coming up. Those closest to Jade face their first Christmas without her. It's December and the first Christmas without Jade. It's going to be a difficult time for everyone, but especially her sons, Bobby and Freddie. 
Jade's friend and our producer, Kate Jackson, is helping the boys' dad, Jeff, wrap their presents. This is the first Christmas without their mum. And I know it's, it's going to make... It's, it's going to take them back to memories of, you know, because children's memories are predominantly based on sort of big occasions and obviously don't come much bigger than Christmas. She decorated that house like it was Father Christmas grotto somewhere. Um, no expense spared, just, just to make sure that the boys um, had a really lovely Christmas. So there's a... It's not pressure, is it? But I'll, I'll do the best that I can. And I want it to be a really special day for them. Just because it's Christmas, not because I don't want them to notice that someone's missing. <laughs> well, what I'm thinking of doing is is getting um, a present from them to their mum that they can leave under the tree Christmas night that won't be there Christmas morning. And like Father Christmas did something with it, and he gave it to mum, and this will be a tradition that we do every year. In the run-up to Christmas, Jade's best friends wanted to do something special for her too. It was Jade's favourite time of the year, so we wanted to try and especially remember her at Christmas. So we went to her grave and decorated it and said a few little words. That was nice. Jackie went over as well and decorated the tree and the tree next to the grave. <laughs> Yeah, it does look cute, though, doesn't it? Oh, I think oh. it looks pretty. Yeah. What ball ball? Look. Oh. Oh. Sweet, isn't it? So now we're going to add even more decorations. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Should we get the tree out? Yeah. Let down, maybe. Yeah. Here? Yeah, who yeah, put that there? Yeah. It's just our way of saying Merry Christmas. And all being together. If you're not straightening it out a bit, it looks a bit. It is a bit lame. <laughs> Jack's mum Mary came along too, and left Christmas cards from her family, and from Jack. There we go. Hey. Um, when she asked us to pick her place, her resting place, she said horses, gates, and we're like. It is amazing. It's the most beautiful place. It is, isn't it? You, you do actually feel like it's just her here, and that's what she wanted. Yeah. I think we kind of all took a moment to just say Merry Christmas. I don't know what she'd think if she was looking at it all. It was quite over the top. Put it behind it. Who's that Put it at the front. We help each other because we were all going through the same thing. But now we all feel like we need to do things together. So it's not just one or two, there'll be, there'll be five of us. Back in Bermondsey, Jade's mum Jackie's trying to finish the memory books that Jade had started for her boys. But she became too ill to complete them. <laughs> Jade's first birthday. And I put her pink reins with her name on it out of Arrods. That's when she had buck tooth like Freddie. <laughs> Jade used to make me do gymnastics and head rolls and everything when she was four. First time Jade ever put Freddie on the sand and he didn't like it. Freddie won't get off the bed, as you can see, because he actually doesn't like the sand. Watch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So the boys knew what people thought of their mum. And their dad loved her. Their dad loved her so much. <sighs> J 
Jade used to drive the car to school and she used to put a special CD on for the boys. And that was Jade's best memory of her boys going to school in the morning. I walk up the hill today. No. On a cold and frosty morning. We got a long walk. Nice. It used to make her laugh so much because they used to just dance going into school. And then, special moments. And Jade reading the Bible. She used to love reading her Bible. And then before she passed, she started reading her Bible again. And um, I think that's enough for now. Um, obviously, it's going to be a lot to fill out the memory book. <laughs> But Jeff's had the most difficult job. He's had to guide his sons through the grieving process of losing their mum. And it's been hard. Judging by what Freddie done a few weeks ago where he sat on the stairs and just was crying for no reason, so I rushed out there and he just screamed, I'm, I'm missing mummy. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that pretty much told me that he's going to seem fine for long periods of time and then every now and again he might just hit that hit that brick wall, that emotional brick wall and um, and really just need a good cuddle and a good cry. Bobby, however, he, he generally... He's probably more likely to feel that it's somehow insensitive on me if he really cries about Mum. I don't know whether he really would anyway. He's a sensitive boy, but he's also a real tough kid as well. Um, but yet, whenever we talk about mum, he always smiles and gets involved with the conversation and takes the conversation on as well. Tired. Look at that, another one over there, another boat over there. I took the boys to see a psychiatrist, and within about 30 minutes, she'd pretty much decided she'd seen enough and that they were absolutely fine and they was coping with it in a textbook fashion, so it was reassuring for me to hear that. Trust your whole body! Whole body! <laughs> when I make decisions, I actually do find myself uh, wondering what Jaden think. And um, it's funny that like, I even go there, because when she was around, that was the last thing that I was thinking, to be honest. But, yeah, I find that it helps me to kind of feel like I've done the right thing or that I've chosen the right thing, whatever that might be, if I know that their mum would have been behind it or she would have supported that decision. <laughs> Adidas Mike! Adidas Mike! Ah, there's Freddie! Come on in. I obviously grew to know exactly what her standards were for the children. Um, and through knowing what her standards were for the boys when she was here, I obviously know that they've all been kept to. She was very particular about a lot of things like homework, about how they're dressed and their hair and, you know, all the things that a mum does care about. And uh, I like to think that I've probably improved a lot as a dad and a lot of that is to do with the fact that I've taken a lot of Jade's um, standards on board. Mummy friends on this fish. Well done. I think uh, Jade would be happy with how the boys are doing. She'd love their school and she'd love the fact that Bobby gets all his spellings right and that he reads 60 page books to himself. Um, she'd love how cheeky Freddie is and that he's so inquisitive and that he's such a little monkey at school. Jade would also be proud of her mum for the way she's coped. Jackie was dumped by Jason two months before she was due to get married. And I got this text message saying, <laughs> I will not be there tomorrow as I wanted my own time. It's changed my whole world and now I don't know what to do. Because I still got my ring on my finger, but look, <laughs> I got a bit of carrier bag stuck in it. The wedding was off. But in true Jackie style, She's picked herself up, dusted herself down, 
and started all over again. <sighs> Was gutted what Jason done, but I have a new man now. And oh, he's wonderful. Do you do that every day? <laughs> no. Helen's here for me and not for who I am and what I do and what I get. So, very happy girl at the moment. <laughs> Brace yourself, love. I'm coming in. <laughs> I'm a big school girl with Aaron. The first year without Jade's had its ups and downs for everyone who was close to her, especially her widower, Jack Tweed. He spent six months of it in prison and has just come home to live with his family. But he's facing a trial later this year which limits what we can say about him. So after a year without her, it's time to consider Jade's legacy. We went from filming an ordinary girl, Jade Goody, a reality star who kind of got her own show one day, and all of a sudden we're here. You know, we've lost her. I don't know how everyone's got past or through the last 12 months. It's almost like she's still here, because she was the link to so many people. Coming up, how Jade was determined to make a difference. I'm doing it to highlight things that have never been highlighted before. Talking about 400,000 extra women going for cervical screening. So if she didn't film it, would well, did she save all them lives? No. Since 2005, TV cameras have been following Jade Goody for this channel. <laughs> Victoria Beckham's not like this. Why am I? When Jade was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2008, she insisted she wanted to keep filming. Yeah. 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 Woo! And she asked her best friend and our producer, Kate Jackson, to make the TV series. She needed to keep busy. She needed to keep working. She certainly couldn't give up. As soon as she gave up work, it meant she'd given up. She didn't want to do that. Secondly, she wanted to earn money for her boys. She was a single mum. She had to look after her boys. And she's left them well provided for. Her will hasn't been published yet, although there's lots of interest. But Jade's priority, her son's private education, is covered and they will never face the financial hardships she did in her childhood. She knew that she could get a message across. And that message was, don't go through what I'm going through. And she knew the power that she had and she used it, regardless of what anyone said to her. Even at the toughest of times, Jade wanted to keep filming. Kate would always check with her. Do you want us to keep filming this? I don't want to just stop halfway through because my hair's falling down. What, what inspiration is that to anybody? You know, I, I'm, I'm doing this for other people. Other people are going through what I'm going through. I'm not the only person on the planet going through it. But there might be a point in this program where I say I'm too weak to film. But at the minute, I'm all right. At the minute, I'm all right. I'm dealing all right with my chemo and I'm dealing all right with my hair. But there might be a moment where it all gets too much for me and I don't want you around anymore. But at the minute, no, I'm happy for you to keep filming. I knew she'd get criticised for it, and she did get criticised for it rather heavily. But in true Jade style, the more they criticised her, the more she wanted to do it. Because why not? She couldn't understand. Why should girls go through what she went through? She wanted to show people. And she did. And she ended up saving lives because of it. With Max Clifford as her spokesman, Jade's story transfixed the nation. On her wedding day, 
there was almost continuous coverage on some news channels. Max even interrupted a Treasury minister discussing the economic crisis. And then Jade's story went global. Her message was out there. In the last three or four months of her life, I would have been doing 20, 30, 40 interviews a day, whether it was from Australia, America, Saudi Arabia, um, Europe. It became a worldwide story. Normally I'm in the middle of situations which create headlines for a few days or maybe a few weeks, but this went on for months. Um, and in all the years I've been doing what I've been doing, and working with some of the most famous people in the world since the early 60s, I've never, ever known anything like it. The girl from Bermondsey had made a difference. It became known as the Jade Goody effect. She was responsible for a huge awareness of cervical cancer, and 400,000 more women went for smear tests. The Jade Goody effect, which I think everyone seems to be... Um, talking about and recognising that, even at a, at a government level, um, was quite extraordinary um, in regards to the numbers of women who went for cervical screening, um, perhaps raising awareness of a cancer that in some degrees had been forgotten beforehand. Um, you know, people forget that this is a disease that still kills nearly three women every single day and that another eight will, will be diagnosed with an uncertain future. So what she did was raise awareness of the disease, she got more women going for screening and hopefully that would have saved lives. Jade's legacy is extraordinary, and her family and friends are proud of it. A big part of keeping Jade's memory alive, or certainly a, a big thing that I'll remind my children of in years to come, will be the fact that she actually, in her death, did save thousands of lives. Um, that's something that they're going to be really, really proud of for a very long time. Hopefully it's something that they can take from it and say, well... I might not have my mum here, but a lot of other children have got their mums here as a result of my mum. It's important to the people who love Jay to keep her memory alive and to carry on her message. Running the um, Dublin Marathon, 26 miles. Um, because in a moment of madness, we signed up to do it when Jade passed away. When I think about her doing the marathon now, I think I don't know how she done it. That was just such a Jade moment. She, I can't believe how strong she was, cos I know that we've trained hard, whereas she'd done nothing, I don't think. She had a latte on the morning, she didn't have proper footwear, and she got to 23 miles. That's just Jade. Hold the right because I've left her behind. <laughs> But I'm hoping she'll be with us today, following us along. Because we are doing it for her, I'm doing it for her. We had a Jade prayer, asking her to get us through, because we're doing it for her. Jade's mum, Jackie, and the other bridesmaids are there to cheer the girls on. Every time I start to slow down, look at the back of Sarah's chest, I see Jade's eyes staring at me. I think I've got to keep going. They cross the finish line, raising £5,000 for Marie Curie nurses. The nurses who looked after Jade. Good afternoon, Nice to see you. Hello, Molly. Hello, Molly. That's it. Boo! Boo! I've lost one of my best friends. I found it really hard. I need to do something nice. So hopefully, yeah, I think she'll be proud. Losing Jade has affected lots of people. But the year without her has been most painful for her boys and, of course, her mum. Spend all your time waiting for that second chance. As well as her grave, Jade has a memorial in the garden of the funeral directors who arranged the service. It's in Bermondsey, where she grew up, close to where her mum, Jackie, still lives. Jade has two places now. Um, she has obviously one in here, which is the memorial gardens in Albion, um, for me, a nan and granddad, 
her best friends to come and visit her here. And then she has a place in Upshire where she's rested. This is the last place I physically see her. Even though she had passed, she was there. She was still my baby girl. That's why it's so hard to come in here, because I know she's not here no more. On the day of Jade's funeral, 50 balloons were released, each with a different message for her. A year on, and Jackie's sending her another one. To my baby girl, Jade, miss you time and time again. I know that you was my star, and now you're the best star in the sky. Love you loads, Mum. so much. Not only have we all lost a friend, but we've lost someone who was just so unique in every way. That's why I think she's so missed by everybody. The voice, I'll never forget the voice. The voice rings on in my ears and everybody's ears. It's just... <laughs> Do you know a funny thing, her laugh, you know, like that silly laugh that she had? It was kind of like a fake laugh sometimes, I think. And I think, is that, are you laughing for real? But I miss that laugh. You always had the biggest emotions with her. If she made you laugh, you'd have that belly laugh that you couldn't stop laughing. Sometimes you just go to ring her, don't you? You just go to ring her and think, is she still there at the other end of the phone? She's going to answer it. So I just miss talking to her. Even when we're arguing, I miss the arguments. <laughs> Jade made a difference. She'd invited us all into her world and she shared everything with us. Her life, her thoughts, her happiness and her pain. But just over a year ago, it was time to turn off the cameras for good. Jade never asked me to stop filming, but I remember the moment I did. It was at the wedding, and it was the shot of her and Jack and the boys on the bench, and they were looking up at the fireworks. And I saw Jade look down at the camera, and she looked at it with a look, and then she found me in the crowd, and she looked at me, and she gave me a look. And I remember just walking over to the cameraman, tapping him on the shoulder and saying, that's it, that's the last shot now. It was the look in her eyes. I'll never forget the look in her eyes. I love her with every skin and every bone of my body. Because she's my little girl. She was just larger than life. And, you know, I've not replaced that, and I don't think I ever will. You'll never find another Jade Goody. When Bobby rolls his eyes, when Bobby's moody, when Bobby's just waking up, it looks very much like Mum. She was a big character and there's no way that a, a big character like her would not have left um, little traits to, to you know, remind me that she was around in Bobby and Freddie. Someday when I'm awfully low When the world is cold I will feel a glow Just thinking of you And the way you look tonight
lovely Don't you ever change you ever change that breathless child Won't you please arrange it Cause I love you Just the way Because I've never lived. Plenty of stories to tell my grandchildren. If you'd like to share your memories of Jade, you can leave your messages on our website tonight. You can also find information about where to go for advice about cervical cancer and details of the charity Joe's Trust, all at livingtv.co.uk slash jade. <laughs>